I just uh, checked out one of Sonny Leonard Doozy's videos and she was uh, describing how she's disrupting the algorithm okay and well she had a nice message for everybody on YouTube but something hit me you know people well content creators all right youtubers in particular they would always um blame the algorithm when it comes to their, when it comes to well, vi their videos not getting any views not getting any engagements no one knows them <laughs> no one knows them and they're blaming the algorithm for it but the way i see it they should not they should really not blame the algorithm i'm sure they're doing uh, they're doing it right they're doing their youtube videos right they are well um exhausting all the all the resources available to them just to get a great video just to um have a nice smooth upload just to uh, get the engagements but well and sometimes they they would get the niche right they are in the night sometimes they are in the right niche but sometimes you just gotta blame the audience you just gotta blame the audience why well primarily you have niche down is the problem with niching you have niche down you upload the videos related to that niche but still you didn't get any views right now don't blame the algorithm for that right you've done your job and the algorithm has done its job too it has already served it's uh serving your videos to those kinds of audience it's not the wrong audience okay you've chosen your niche you've chosen the topic you're passionate about but there are times that you got to blame the, the audience now you may be in the right uh you may be serving to the right audience but if the right audience is indifferent as fuck you won't get any views for that video no one will engage in that video it's happened to me several times already over the past uh, over the past two years that I've been active on YouTube it has happened but well I don't give a shit if no one even if no one even views my video as long as I get the word out as long as I say my piece that's fine with me but you just got to blame the audience once in a while now there's no such thing as there's no such thing as a right or wrong audience right there are only two kinds of for me there are only two kinds of audiences on youtube there's the engaging and the indifferent if the niche you chose has an indifferent audience then tough luck tough luck for you you won't get any views in your videos your channel won't uh your channel will seem to be non-existent to them but it's no reason to to quit no reason to uh to cry about it okay you just push forward blame once then push forward right so sometimes let me repeat sometimes when your content is not uh getting getting noticed you just got to blame the audience not the algorithm i've been trying to Put out diaries entries for the past few days, and this is this will be probably this is definitely my uh, first in three days. Well, maybe because uh, I've been feeling this funk 
for the past few days and well, I've I've jotted down all my content ideas for the diaries but I just couldn't put it on video but underneath but on top of it all well, you just gotta put out that content I just told myself JG you just gotta put out that you just gotta put that content out so right now I'm going to, right now this is my first content in three days and well we just gotta address that funk the funk is real if you don't accept it then well you're not gonna get anything done it's a product consider this a productivity hack the funk is real address oh, not in the address acknowledge it then deal with it deal with it harshly if you have to again the funk is real I'm right here to uh, place an order for a particular uh, for a particular product that I really want to become an influencer for right. here's the thing about uh, brand deals most people don't actually get it brand deals are also business deals if you don't prove yourself worthy well if you don't prove yourself worthy first they're not going to take you seriously. Any brand, any other brand will not take you seriously. So I'll be investing in this brand deal, and hopefully, well, I pray that uh, that I can become an influencer of theirs. They're one of their ambassadors. Because sometimes you have to invest in your own brand deals. Hey, it's my sister. Other uh, body influencers think that you should. Uh, you just pitch your you just pitch your social accounts out there and hopefully hopefully some some big brand uh, addresses you as an influencer but it's not always the case you have to prove to the brand that you are, that you can also be both an influencer and a customer that's what I'm that's what I'm uh, trying to pull off here right now well again you have to you have to invest sometimes in your own brand deals. You have to prove to brands that you are not just a worthy influencer but a worthy customer. Because, well, it builds trust. Bottom line. Being a customer first builds trust. I just um, noticed something about Reddit. Right, it's a great platform to um, to share videos, especially um, well when I when I when I first started my account there, original content. But lately, uh, it's not getting any views anymore. And well, don't get me wrong, Reddit is a great platform for for anybody's opinion. All right, it's just that. When it comes to uh, when it comes to sharing TikTok videos, they are they are over the board strict. All right, uh, most groups. I don't know. I don't know if they have a problem with TikTok or something. It's a, it's a great platform actually. It's no longer the um, it's no longer the dance videos wielding pet videos sharing TikTok we know, right? It has evolved. You see educational, you see educational videos. You see creepy videos. All right, that's why I said in one of my, um, in one of my TikTok videos, TikTok is the new Reddit. It's very true. All right, it's very true. It's, I don't know. It's, it is. Is it just me or is, or is well, is Reddit scared of TikTok? Is Reddit scared of TikTok? Uh, I, that's what I've been. Uh, that's what I've been figuring out because 
my um, I tried to post TikTok videos twice already in a certain group in a certain subreddit they they removed both in both times the admins removed it I, I, I didn't I didn't share any um, I didn't share I don't I don't tend to share I don't share creepy stuff I share educational stuff I say I, I, I share anime stuff but what the hell I was only um what you call this sharing TikTok videos that weren't that weren't creepy that weren't um, sexually explicit all right I wouldn't I don't uh, the TikTok videos I did not share there was really explicit in nature but they turned down both okay? both times I was turned down I don't know if um, reddit is itself if reddit itself is insecure of TikTok or there are most groups that had that had had enough of TikTok they I think they uh, see it as um, too commercialized it, that they probably view it as the next YouTube as the new YouTube no I, I don't think so because it is a Chinese company it is based in Hong Kong okay so they're uh, they don't they don't they don't give a fuck about what happens in the US but as uh, as we all know the US government is uh, I think it, it's it's planning it's pla it's already in the planning stages of banning TikTok there now I don't know why I don't know what the I don't know what I don't know what President Trump I don't know what President Trump's mindset is these days right there's an election uh, there's an election there's an election there happening in November any um, any either approves or initiates these kinds of policies against China right now TikTok has so many users in the US but anyway that's a, that's another uh, that's another video all I'm saying right now is reddit is scared of TikTok that's the way I see it I just recently come uh, came I just recently came across this news about Naya Rivera Santana of Glee uh, up to now she still couldn't be found right uh, being a uh, being a somewhat Glee fan uh, because well it, it hit me right uh, she, her character she's one of them she's one of the more well-loved stars of that show and wow i can't believe santana is missing okay now <clears throat> based on the reports she had her four-year-old son with her the, the day she disappeared her four-year-old son was on the boat with her then when uh rescuers came only her son was there right and i think one of the life vests was still there Okay, but up to now she couldn't. Up to now, um, they couldn't find her. She just disappeared. Now, now we all know that Naya Rivera played Santana in Glee, okay. which uh, she liked boys when uh, during the first few seasons. Then after. She formed a lesbian relationship with one of the other characters, one of, one of the other female leads in the in the show. I forgot her name already. I forgot the real. I forgot the real name of the one, uh, the one who portrayed her. Okay. All I know is Naya Rivera. Okay, she was. Santana was a bitch during the first few seasons of Glee, but fans got to got to love her character because um, she because. We all found out that her character was in a uh, a gender dilemma as well. So yeah, they eventually she and her girlfriend got married in the final season. You know what? Glee Glee was is probably the most gender tolerant show ever created. All right, and I'm glad I saw a few seasons of that, especially the final season. Okay, I saw the final season. And one of the reasons why I um, 
Why I watch that show is because of a compatriot of mine, Jake Zyros, then known as Charis Pempenko. Okay? She had a character there. She had a recurring character there. And she was good, right? It showcased her it showcased her singing talent. Okay? So, uh, Jake's an awesome singer. But aside from being the most gender tolerant show ever created, due to um, Naya Rivera's disappearance, it's become one of the most cursed shows of all time. Okay? Now, Naya Rivera isn't the only um, isn't the only death, assumed, presumed death. Okay? Her death is only presumed because they haven't found her body yet. We, we, we don't actually we actually don't know if she is dead or alive. Okay? She just disappeared. Now, the two uh, there were there were two previous deaths uh, involving the Glee cast members. The first one was of course Cory Monteith, okay, who died months before I think months before filming the final season. Okay. The first uh, the first person the first person to grieve is of course her his co-star and living partner Leah Michelle. Okay. Then, after that, he actually, uh, I think, he died of a drug overdose. Okay. I said, uh, at first, I thought, what? Cory Monty died dead of a drug overdose? I said, holy shit. But the So, yeah. Uh, we all accepted that he's dead already. And, of course, during the final season, he was remembered during the first few episodes. Then it was Mark Selling's turn. Naya Rivera's ex and also co-star. Okay. I saw Mark Selling during the fin final season. Okay. His character also had a gay relationship there. So he was convicted of a um, of a pornography offense. Then I think 24 hours after he he killed himself. Okay. I think this is one of the most, um, one of the most, I think he's the most badass uh, uh, cast members of Glee. You see, Mark Selling. And for him to take his own life, I, I, I would think, I, I, I just found out that he actually took his own life, okay, during, when I was reviewing Naya Rivera's case. I said, holy shit. Why the hell would he kill himself? Why the hell? It's because of that uh, he's gonna go to jail? <laughs> I, I felt sad. And now, this. Naya Rivera. Okay? Santana. The, the, the girl who played Santana in Glee. She's gone missing. Left her four-year-old son on a boat. Okay? The life vest that was meant for her was still on that boat. <sighs> I don't know. Okay. A show as gender tolerant and as wholesome as Glee should not uh, should not be um, should not be remembered this way. All right. Glee opened all our eyes to the. To what the LGBTQ community was is going through, right? There are there are a lot of gay and lesbian characters there. Even their even even their um, I think their uh, I think their basketball coach, who who who's a woman, then in the final season, she was already a trans man. Okay. It opened my eyes with how as, as to how the LGBTQs are, how they're, uh, how they're going through life. Okay, it made me respect. It made me respect them even more. That uh, glee made them respect. Made me respect them even more. So yeah, I have to thank Glee for that, for opening my eyes further when it comes to the LGBTQIA plus community.
to to further understand them they should not well they should not be prejudiced they should be respected of their choice they should be what's call this they should not be just they should not be just tolerated they should be accepted right who are we to judge who are we to judge okay we're just we're just humans like them in order for us to be uh, humans of a higher level we should just not just appreciate them but well become friends with them right uh, like i said in one of my uh, entries i am an ally of the lgbtqia plus community and now i am repeating that but i'm going to modify that i am an ally of the lgbtqia plus community because of glee i hope glee doesn't uh, because of um uh, naya's uh, disappearance right i hope glee doesn't go down in tv history as one of the most cursed shows of all time please all right all right the deaths of Cory monteith and mark selling are enough please don't uh we should not uh we should not uh, let it go down this path. We should not. Right? We should not. <laughs>